Super. 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 What up, brosifs? It's us, Super BS, a podcast about video games, mostly, and I am your baby boy, lovable baby boy, tiny boy, Brank, and I'm joined by my ever compatriot, the friend that I've always had. What's your name? I'm just the uh, truly hated and despised uh, big boy who Ooh. nobody likes. Ooh. I like to like... I like to go around knocking ice cream cones out of the hands of children and Boo! laughing. Your Man, boy, that was uh, our fans <laughs> booing you uh, in the stadium where we're recording. JJ oh. the Terrible is my <laughs> name the today. Terrible. You're like those uh, wrestlers, the ones that are always bad. I don't know what they're... The heels. You're a heel, okay, JJ? <laughs> I'm the good guy. I'm the guy wearing the diaper coming out there. Everybody's super excited. I'm Captain Underpants himself. And you are that despicable, despicable heel who gives me a wedgie, okay? And I don't like it. Don't like it one <laughs> bit. Um, to the world of gaming, this is a crazy week. We are about to start the next generation of consoles, and it seems like it's going to be real, real, real messy this week because I, uh, I don't think everybody's going to get their consoles on Tuesday. Um, I've heard that a lot of the Xboxes and PlayStations are potentially going to miss uh, launch day deliveries. So that's going to be interesting. But back to us uh, lowly peasants who don't have next gen yet. Um, what have you been playing, Ever Terrible JJ? So I had, I went, we went into Sam's Club yesterday. And Boo! so I, that's when our I, fans hating <laughs> Sam's Club. <laughs> At E3 a couple years ago, I got to uh, basically test out the. At Games Ultimate Legends Arcade Cabinet. It's like a full-size okay. cabinet. has uh, It's got about 30 pages of games. So I want to say it's around two, 300 games on there that you can play. Okay. And uh, we went in there, and I had no idea that this thing was going to be there. But we walk up, and there's an end cap because they got all this Christmas stuff, and the thing's on sale. So it's just sitting there, and they make such limited runs of these arcade cabinets. And so I was looking, you know, turned to a spree, and I was like... I think we need this. And she goes, well, I was going to get you an Xbox for Christmas, but uh, if you want this, we can get this instead. And I was like, oh, no. And, you know, this was, do? this was a this guarantee. Is the... This was a guarantee. Anyways, it's I was like, moral well, how, dilemma, about, though. <laughs> how about we get this? And then I'm just going to cash out some of my stock investments in order to buy the Xbox. And she's like, that's fine. So I got this, set it up. Really, really great machine. You know, you can do all okay. it's it's the arcade the arcade one up cabinets are very like non responsive, but like this one has been it is pretty solid. Like it's got the rollers, it's got the side buttons, it's got a lot of like really cool features on it. A lot of really, really old arcade games on there. And the cool thing is you can save your games on here. You don't have to like start from the beginning, if that makes okay. sense. So yeah, I've played yeah, yeah. a lot of Played a lot of like the original Star Wars trilogy that was on the Game Boy. I've played a little bit of uh, Ast or Space Invaders. Um, Is it know, a full size cabinet? It's a full size cabinet. Yeah, I played a little. Oh, bit of that's neat. Contra. Yeah. So I, I've been kind of like spending a lot of time at this thing. Um, you know, I, I'm trying to figure out how to add games onto it just because I've heard that you gotta you go can, to the dark web okay <laughs> the dark web i'll give you the address go to the dark web and w ask w for w jill dar darkweb.com slash jill yeah slash jill but anyways you that's what i've been playing <laughs> i've got uh, uh i reached a point um you know where i'm like ready to play something new but i'm kind of like waiting for to see if i can grab one of them sweet sweet new consoles tonight and uh you know i've if so, I'll pl be playing Assassin's Creed on the Xbox Series X. If not, then I will be playing it on Xbox One. What about you, though? Yeah. What are you playing? I'm, I'm kind of torn. I'll, I'll talk to you about what I've been playing, but I am torn about that. Like, some of these, you know, I have, an X I have an Xbox One X. I think you're running off the Xbox One standard still, right? Yes. 
I have an Xbox One X, and I'll talk about some of the games we've been playing, but I turned on Gears Tactics this morning. I'll talk more about that soon. And it ran great. It looks nice. Everything about it's cool. So I've kind of resigned myself to only getting the Series X if I can get it off Amazon because they have deals for people who haven't picked up their credit card where, like, for a lot of items on Amazon, if you uh, apply for their credit card and you're pre-approved or whatever, they'll give you $100 off whatever you purchase. So for me, that would be the ticket. To get a Series X for 400 bucks, you know, and then a little bit more after tax, I would definitely be down for that. So I would love a Series X, but I think I'm going to only get one if I can get it off of Amazon. Because like I said, the Xbox One X runs stuff really well still. And from what I, I've kind of gathered, while the Series S is more powerful than the Xbox One X... It's kind of only barely more powerful than the Xbox One X. So, yeah, yeah, man. Um, but Gears Tactics is something I've been playing, but I don't want to talk about that yet because that's the newest thing. So that's what everybody wants to hear. I want to tease you. I want you guys to be like, oh, man, I want to hear about Gears Tactics so bad. And then be like, well, first you got to listen to this other crap I got to talk about to all. get to the good stuff. First yeah. eat all your broccoli, okay, kids? Then you're going to get to your dessert. Um, yeah, so I talked about Watch Dogs Legion last week. I talked about how much I enjoyed it. I have totally hit a turning point with that game. I don't okay. want to turn it on anymore is the turning point. Um, I think this the idea that they had was great, but because they did not give you any uh, specific character progression, like it's just team progression, and I got all those team things I wanted within like two hours, and because of that, you can only hold most most people can only hold one gadget at a time. And if they can hold two, they normally have an individual gadget that they already hold. And then to play that game properly, you pretty much always need a spider drone. So you pretty much don't get to use AR cloaks or any of those other things unless you just want to make the game more difficult. You must play with a spider drone. So you can get other gadgets, but you shouldn't use them unless you want the game just to be more challenging for the sake of like, hey, I'll... Let's have it more challenging. And if you're a construction, yeah. that is me. I'm also a master builder, so I build Yeah, you still riding that sweet, sweet drone around? You, uh, I, I am. I'm, I'm riding the cargo the drone, and I'm also looking outside my window as somebody chops down trees. Thankfully, at this time, I always try to podcast whenever somebody's chopping trees down because that's when I like to podcast. That's my want. Um, yeah, so I'm in the game. I'm still riding cargo drones around. That's still fun, but the story is almost pointless it doesn't feel fun at all like the most fun i have is kind of recruiting people the story itself is like kind of just dumb you know like like i told you it's very applicable to today but you're never like there's no encouragement to finish it quicker and the part i'm at right now is like oh they're doing bad stuff so go here and then you do like the same mission everywhere hack a few things send the spider drone in you finish the quest like they don't make anything where you need to be a specific character like yeah it can be easier if you have the the costume to be an albion guard or if you have the if you're a medic and you need to go there yeah it's a little bit easier but you still can't like walk in freely it's not like you can be those people and just do your job like you should be able to if anybody sees your face you're still like caught um but yeah man i i really do want to get back to the game at some point but it's it's just it just feels like it's pointless. A lot of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it, it definitely feels like it's like, Oh, this, this is, is not, have you managed to like grab onto like a story beat that keeps you interested? I mean, not really like the ones you do for the individuals are kind of fun, but as they're all like, uh, randomly generated or, uh, oh, what's that word that every rogue, like procedural generation. Cause they're all procedurally generated. A lot of them just don't seem like they fit. Like I had a street performer that I had to help and he needed me to hack something. It's like, I, I get it. I get that it would be too hard and complicated to make them all fit, but it would have been cool if they made them like fit specifically for their arc archetypes. You know what I mean? Instead of like, everybody needs something hacked. That's like yeah. 90% of the jobs in the game. Um, and like, they took out a lot of the things I liked from the older Watch Dogs. Like, you played Watch Dogs 1, right? I did, yes. They had like a thing where you could check into the individual like buildings that were like landmarks, right? Like, oh, hey, check out this landmark or go in Watch Dogs 2, take a selfie in front of this landmark. That's for San Francisco. Mm -hmm. They got rid of that stuff. There's no good reason to go around London outside of just like to go from mission to mission. So at least as far as I know, and they got rid of the phone. So like they have podcasts and music, but you can only listen when you're driving. 
That sounds crazy. Like in the future, you would imagine people be able to listen to music wherever they are. But they took out that, which is also kind of a bummer. So, so is there know. any? Um, I don't know. I mean, uh, what, you, what? Who's the main? A- Aiden Pierce, or is there any like stories involving him that you're able to find? Uh, no, that's DLC. He's not in the okay. game. Okay. All right. So no, there's no there's no character to latch onto. There's only Bagley, which is the AI, and Sabine, yeah. which is this girl you saw for like a couple minutes at the beginning of the game. And to be honest, I don't really like either of them very much. They're not like yeah. bad, but they're just like Bagley is the sassy AI and Sabine is the cool chick hacker who's really <laughs> dark. And yeah, I mean, we've never seen this before because iRobot doesn't exist. So, you know, like <laughs> it's it's just weird. You know what I mean? It's like, okay, so they're telling a really generic story and it's, I don't know, man. It's also like, bizarre like this is not going to make it our news story but like they're talking about a tyrannical government and that's you know who's like taking away stuff from people and then this week ubisoft patched out one of the characters from the the in-game podcast because that character wrote something that was deemed transphobic so it's like yeah it's happened over the week and i don't know a lot about this person i don't know if their stuff was actually trans or like you know whatever the person's a hardcore feminist which in england generally what we found from jk rowling is <laughs> uh people who are hardcore feminists are transphobic you know that that's tends to be the bottom line and i'm sorry yeah, if this so is making a listener thing, uncomfortable yeah. i but, am yeah. uh, i need to leave i'm sorry i'm yeah I've i'm been, sorry i'm triggering i've been triggered and I, you know, I haven't been kink shaming you this whole time like I try to, but uh, I definitely yeah, have been I, triggering everyone. I identify sexually as a unicorn, so yeah, I mean, um, oh. you have. Well, we lost, uh, we lost the last six <laughs> listeners. Now <laughs> they all identified as unicorns. Okay, Josh. So, <laughs> oh no, actually as, oh, as Capricorns. No, um, no anyways, <laughs> Capricorns. it's. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they were they're actually Sagittarius, but they identify as Capricorn date of birth. So is, don't mm. don't uh oh gosh darn it. I always forget these words when I'm talking about that. What is that uh the astrological charts? Is it called like just astrology? Um, your ast- your charts. Astrology, um, your signs. Yeah, your signs. Zodiac don't signs. Sign shame me. Your zodiac. No, the zodiac signs are the uh signs from Asia. Oh. Um, like the monkey and the horse and the the rabbit and stuff. Anyways, so, like, they pull out this character stuff. They patch them to be out of it. So it's, like, kind of weird in a game where it's, like, they're subjugating the people and they're taking away stuff from people because they yeah. disagree with their beliefs. Uh, obviously, you know, you don't have to agree with me. Like, I've heard a lot of people saying, you know, if you're transphobic, even a little bit, you're anti-human, right? So whatever your beliefs are, that's fine. It's just kind of strange in this game. And as always, Ubisoft, like, doesn't want to make it political, but they do, you know, like, because this game's about Brexit. They don't want to make it, though, very political. So I I don't know. It's like, I don't need it to be political. I don't want it to be political, but I also don't want it to be like, oh, they made a political game, but now they're afraid of losing a fan, so they're going to patch out all this stuff. And that's not why I'm not playing it. I'm not playing it because the game has its own issues, but I just thought that was really, really kind of ironic in a way. Yeah. Um, but whatever I, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of done with Legion for the time being. I'm going to bring up a game that I never talk about on this podcast. Actually, I've, I've mentioned it, but I don't think I've ever actually talked about it. Apex legends. Um, oh. I, I love the game. Love <clears throat> it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Far Cry five. Which I was gonna Far say. Cry five. Yeah. The game I love. Mm, we talked about oh, that on old super BS and everybody remembers. I love it. Uh, Dr. Donna <laughs> hated it. I uh, revisionist history. Um, yeah. Apex Legends, they released season seven recently, and sadly, like most things, when I bring it up, it's not about anything good. I think they honestly, like, kind of ruined the game in a lot of ways. They made a battle pass where they made it 0.6 times speed, so 40% slower to level up at the at the highest. So they used to do this thing where if you bought a battle pass, which is $10, you could earn enough currency if you got to the max level to get the next battle pass for free, right? And most of these battle passes are easy enough that I could play for like 20 minutes a day, 30 minutes a day, and do that every season. I'd get to 100 or 110. 100 would get you the silver weapon. 110 would get you the gold weapon. You'd have all the currency by 99. They've changed it so that normally when I would play the first day of the season, I would get like three battle pass levels up. They've made it so difficult that I've played still almost every day because I do like the way the game plays. 
and I am Battle Pass level four because I'm not the best Apex player. It is so frustrating to see them do this to a game where you can see the reason why they did it because they're not making enough money and they made it like, they made it abhorrently difficult. They made it to the point where like, so in the old way, you would need about 9,000 experience to level up the first level each week. And then the second level would be 13,000, et cetera, et cetera. It would go up. Okay. At the start of season seven, to get one level up, if you just want to do it by experience and not challenges, you needed 100,000 experience points. So it Dang. went from 9,000 the previous season to 100,000 this season. After that, to try to show good graces, they changed it to 5,000 per star, and you need 10 stars. So now you need 50,000 experience still. That's after they fixed it. So even though it's still half of what they originally set it at, it's still, the original was 9,000, then 13, then 24, then 36, then 45, then 54, and it used to cap out at 54 every week. And then every week it would reset on Tuesday. So now it's 50 regardless, every time. So yeah. it's it's really frustrating to see a game, and, I, and I'm wondering if it's like EA that's pushing them or if they need money or or what, what the case is, why they distra- decided to destroy what was a really fun battle pass that I used to like to grind and play every day for to make it so difficult that I, I kind of just don't want to pick it up anymore. Like I just yeah. want to play it for when I want to play it and then never try it again. It's too frustrating. Yeah. So anyways, enough about frustration though. Gears Tactics. I'm playing that because it launched a day early on Games Pass. So I started this morning. I saw, oh, hey, it's ready. So I turned it on. It is cool, man. It's really neat. Um, It's a XCOM-like game. Did you ever play XCOM or XCOM 2? I should say XCOM Enemy Unknown um, or XCOM I have 2? not. I've heard. I know people enjoy it, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure. I, I've never actually played it. Yeah, it's it is like one of the best uh turn-based strategy games. Like I kind of can't think of anything that I enjoy more in its style, I should say. It's not like Final Fantasy Tactics. It is a game that's very uh percentage-based and you'll hide in cover and you'll go on Overwatch and you'll do a bunch of stuff that's been in games like Mario Cross Rabbids and a few other things. But it's it's the best XCOM is. Gears Tactics is essentially riffing on that. It's doing that exact same thing. And in my mind, it's it's a pretty good facsimile, but it's not perfect. And the biggest issue I have with it is XCOM 2, you could save anywhere. If you're in the middle of a mission, you can save, at least in my recollection, you could save. And you could save whenever you need, right? Because these mit- these matches can take a long time. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you're super familiar with it, but Xbox seems to be a big fan of autosave. I think a lot of that has to do with how they they handle saves within the cloud, where they want yeah. you to have that cloud well, I mean, save feature. Like, I've gotten so used to autosave that I don't like on games where I have to manually save. I don't remember to do it anymore, so I usually end up just like forgetting and then losing See, my for me, save spots. While manually saving is off or auto saving is awesome, I prefer manually saving because what if I need to leave? You know, what if it's like, yeah. oh, my wife's done making dinner because she's awesome and she makes dinner a lot and I need to stop playing. It's like, okay, well, we have resume features, which are good, but it's like, what if I switch out of that app to watch something on Netflix with her and I forget to get back to it and then the app right. closes, right? So Gears Tactics is a game that I think when when I get a Series X will be perfect for quick resume. Because the game only saves after each mission. And if any if the missions are as long as the first one, which took me an hour to complete, then I'm never gonna be able to finish that game without quick oh, resume. Geez. Because I had to do I had to dedicate um one hour of my time to get from the opening mission to the second one. Yeah. It was a ton of fun. Like I enjoyed the whole time and I'm looking forward to playing it more. And there's like leveling up and tons of other things you can do in it. But it's just, it's still that idea. You know what I mean? Where it's like, oh, I have to play an hour or I'm kind of screwed. I lose it. (laughs) You know what I mean? But yeah, man, Gears Tactics out. If you have Games Pass, give it a shot. There's a bunch of stuff launching tonight um, or by the time you listen to this. A day ago, Assassin's Creed Valhalla, Yakuza Like a Dragon. Yeah, I mean, this is next gen in a nutshell. And it's going to be happening real quick. Uh, Do you have any other games you want to talk about before we enter the news? Uh, no, not that I can think of. I, I have been playing this uh, Bubble Bobble. Oh, real, for, for Friends? 
or whatever uh, the one is? No, it well, it came out on iOS uh, a couple of weeks ago. It's where you could actually play for money, like uh, bust oh. a move for money. Nice. So I've I've been playing that around gambling. with that. Yeah, <laughs> little iPhone gambling, but. Uh, no, it's game's actually kind of cool because it's made by the company that makes the game, so you know, you know, you know what you're getting into with it. But anyways, Tido, man, yeah. Anyways, well, we that. will we will be talking a lot about a lot of crazy news in just a minute. Peace. Super BS. What up? We are back with some of the craziest news that you've ever heard in your entire life. Before we get to all this next generation nonsense, let's get back to something that. JJ just loves and can't wait to talk about, and I have heard about infinite times. Take it away, man. What is this game that you wanted that they finally announced? Finally announced Mass Effect Legendary Edition. So this has it's a remastered version of Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3, and it is coming out in the spring of 2021. It will include, uh, I think, all the DLC, as they said, and... I am pretty excited. I don't know if I'm the only one who notices, but there's a lack of Shepard in the trailer, so I'm curious like what that's all about. Okay. But uh, I am pretty excited about this. Alongside that, they also announced that they are working on a new Mass Effect adventure, so I doubt they're going to be returning to the Andromeda world, which makes me wonder, are we going to be... Did they retcon Mass Effect 3's ending and want to continue the journey of Shepard, or are we getting something completely new? I just hope that yeah. it's not like, um, I don't know, I just hope that, you know, they tried something new with Andromeda, it didn't really work out, so I'm not sure uh, what to expect, but I do appreciate that they said the veteran team is going to be working on this game, so... As we all know, last time they pulled the veteran team off of Mass Effect to work on a super bad Star Wars game, and that didn't really work out so well for everybody. Wait, I thought they pulled the veteran team off to work on Anthem. Is that no, your super they, bad Star Wars game? No, they pulled the when Andromeda came out, they pulled the team off to work on uh, Battlefront. If really? I remember correctly, I thought yeah. it was. I thought it was Anthem. I, I'm pretty positive it's Anthem, man. But I, I could be wrong. Anyways, regardless, both. Both those games weren't good. Um, I think Battlefront 1, I never played 2, but Battlefront 1 was probably, I enjoyed a little bit more than 2, but I didn't even try 2. I mean, I tried the demo, and I was like, oh, okay, this is whatever. Yeah. It's not not bad, just wasn't great. Um, yeah, man, so when can I play this uh, new Mass Effect on my Switch? Because that's all I care about. Yeah, I mean, that it'll be fun to be able to play it on the go. I just hope that it's not, like, cloud-based and I have to have, a, like, a signal to play it. So I would hope that it would be a physical You missed copy. my lead! You missed my lead! It's not coming to Switch, man. That oh. was the rumor a long time oh. ago. It's not coming to Switch. Yes, that is oh, a bummer. Well. And also, oh, well. do we know if it's actually a remake or a remaster? It's a remaster. It's not a remake. Yeah. Honestly, man, this is why I could care less about it. Like, I... I, I know we've talked about it a lot on this podcast. I loved Mass Effect 1. And I even really thought yeah. Mass Effect 2 was great. And I didn't even get through Mass Effect 3. But it's the fact is, like a remaster, especially this late, I, I don't care. Like, they needed to remake it at this point. You know what I mean? Like, a, a remaster is great if you can't play it. But I can turn on Mass Effect 1, 2, or 3 on my Xbox One X, or on it will be workable on the Series X. And I'll play yeah. it with better graphics and faster load times. So what are they going to do for someone like me? You know what I mean? Like, right. who is this for who doesn't, who's like, oh, man, I need it slightly better looking, but not actually very, it's not going to look great, you know, but I want to be a little bit better looking than it will look, and I'll pay 60 bucks to have just a tiny, tiny edge. It's like the Bioshock collection, right? Like, yeah. it's neat, but at $60, it made no sense. Like, right. on Xbox, at least. So... I don't know, man. I I personally don't care. I know that's <laughs> probably rude and mean of me to say that about this thing Jeez, that you man. have been Come excited on. for. But I I am hoping it is decent. But we've seen so many just cash in remasters this generation. Like I don't care about them anymore. Yeah. Give me remakes. Give me another remake. You know what I mean? Like it's re like Resident Evil Two remake and the few remakes we've seen have like Tony Hawk. Like those mm -hmm. have all been incredible. But right. like all these remasters, it's like it's like the the Mario thing. It was fun to play those games, but honestly, that bundle itself, like, yeah. is the reason why I can't put it on my top ten because they just they they just oh hey we don't want to do any work 
here, just take this old garbage that we did. <laughs> um, these are great games, so we know you'll pay for it, and they are yeah. great games, but it's like, oh, you can't even bother to do any work. People did the work. People have done the work online. That's the frustrating thing. Right. That exists out there. Mods do. But it's like, no, no, we don't want to even hire somebody on for 10000 bucks or whatever and, and use their modding tools. Yeah, man, I know that's like a really, I know I'm really complaining the show, hardcore, I apologize about that. Jeez, but come on, that, man. Yeah, come we on, We just man. had an election, leave it alone, uh, I know. Stop Everybody, complaining about things. I know, I've been dancing in the street and yes, queening all weekend, man, yeah, but now I'm back on. to complain about games, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, man, it is, uh, it's really, really frustrating to me when I see all these remasters, and I think we're going to see a lot of them, to be honest, because PlayStation 5 still is only backwards compatible up to PlayStation 4. So yeah. all the PS3 games, I think, are still going to be in remaster territory where it's like, oh, man, just do a remake. Remake it. Um, <laughs> speaking of PlayStation, we finally have been getting a, a lot more news because the PlayStation reviews came out. A lot of people really, really like it. It is as enormous as everyone said. Um, Bug Snacks got reviewed. It's supposed to be a really, really fun thing. They found out that Spider-Man for PS4, you can transfer your save file to the Spider-Man remaster on PS5. The thing that they said you could not do, they just found out you can do it. Um, but a thing to know, if you are buying a PS5, do not buy an SSD for your PS5. For your Series X, they have like, uh, what are they called? Um, not patented, but they have like specific v Xbox versions you need to buy for your SSD upgrades. PlayStation yeah. 5 does not have those, and they said do not uh, try to do anything in the expansion port yet because it's not going to work. They're going to update that. Um, they also are not allowing PS5 to do 8K out of the gate. I don't know who has an 8K TV. I don't know who cares, but they thought that was newsworthy, so... Sorry, you five people who have an AK. <laughs> like, I don't. I just don't know. I don't have a 120 hertz TV, which will allow yeah. you to do 120 frames per second. I don't have AK, so like, I guess if you had infinite money, then you're probably upset. But you're probably also gaming on like a ten thousand dollar PC rig, so none of this matters. You know what I mean? Like, you're probably not even listening to us because we talk about games that aren't tomorrow. You know what I mean? So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Um, PS5 is interesting. I still definitely want to get one. I think they don't have enough to sell me on it immediately. Obviously, they have more games than the Xbox Series X. Yeah, well, Series that's what X a lot of a lot of the reviews are saying. The Series X is really good, but it's like being all dressed up with nowhere to go, you know. Whereas the PS5 has a couple things out you can actually like play. Yeah, but I, I mean, I think, and I don't know, we talked about this last week kind of slightly. The big reason that I push Series X instead of PS5 is because they've allowed me to bring all of my games over so I can get rid of my Xbox One X immediately. Now, you'd be like, oh, we well, can get rid of your PS4 if you get a PS5. Sure, but say I want to play Star Wars Knights of the Republic, which I talked about last week. I can't do that on my PS5. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I cannot do that. Now, is Star Wars Knights of the Republic as exciting as Demon's Souls? Probably not, because Demon's Souls is a remake of an old game. But at that same thing, it's like, I'll get a PS5. I definitely will. I'm just not, like, worried about getting it immediately, like everybody right. else seems to be. So, yeah, um, yeah man. So we're going to find out what happens. There's going to be a lot more, I think, information once these get into the hands of people. And I'm curious how many of these get into people's hands this week. Because, like, well, even, like... Go ahead. Yeah. No, no, I was going to say, like, even the people, pre like, you're going to say people who pre ordered it might not get them, but I'm curious, like, people who are trying to grab consoles tonight at launch, like, I'm noticing a lot of these retailers aren't releasing times. Like, Walmart has said they will have some uh, Series X available tomorrow at 12 yeah. Eastern time. And then GameStop said they will have some available tonight, but they're not saying what time. Best Buy has a uh, countdown timer to midnight. But it like everyone's being very vague on like what time they can get those at, and that's kind of like frustrating me from a consumer standpoint. I think, yeah, man. I I wish I could say it's going to be a lot easier to get it right now, but I'm honestly I'm moving my prediction from like after it launches to like January. Like I think, yeah, because people, I the thing that surprised me the most is because we're in the place economically where we are, sorry, I'm talking about the real world, because we have issues going on right now that are outside yeah. of gaming, I did not think that people would be rushing out to pay $500 for these consoles. Right. But what I forgot to think about is 
hey, a lot of these people, they were buying, they were going to concerts, they were going to comedy shows, they were buying different things that they will no longer be buying. So yeah. 500 bucks is not that big a deal for the people who still have their jobs and have their normal life. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, man, I think these are going to be hot ticket items. And honestly, like I, I would love one, you know, like I yeah. would love to have one. Like I, it's the fact is like, even though my Xbox one X runs everything great, like I would like to play Assassin's Creed Valhalla at 60 frames per second, not at 30. I would like things to run as good as possible. And yeah. $500 for that opportunity doesn't actually seem that bad. Like a PC that would do the same stuff would be about 800 plus. So, yeah, right. Yeah, man. But speaking of price, because you and I like talking about price a lot, mainly you. I'm the one who spends all the money all the time and I never look <laughs> at deals and I've never even talked about a deal on this show. I hate deals. Yeah, um, right. <laughs> Sony, this is a weird rumor or report that I don't know why IGN posted it, but it is just kind of interesting to talk about. Sony has reportedly discussed increasing game prices above $70 before they decided on those price points. I guess they thought about going higher. Could you imagine? And this is like obviously a hypothetical. That's not what they ended up going with, but it's interesting nonetheless. Could you imagine if Sony decided like instead of going from 60 to 70 this next generation, they were going 60 to 80 or 60 to even well, more than that? You're like at the point where you're paying almost one fourth of the cost of a video game console. So, like, what, yeah. at what point do you just like not buy games anymore? You know, because you're. If say it rises up to eighty to a hundred dollars, like cer- a special, you know, you want a special edition of a game, you're paying a hundred dollars. That's like a quarter of what you paid for your console. And it, at at that point, it seems like the model doesn't make sense anymore. Yeah, I I don't know, man. And that's why I think Games Pass is the future. Sadly, like I still think we're gonna see these big triple a quadruple a as they like calling themselves now, which is silly yeah. marquee titles. Like I think cyberpunks aren't going anywhere, but mm-hmm. I would not be surprised if even games like Ubisoft start either lowering their price or even jamming more stuff in there. I think the $70 price point is needed to happen because cost of living because of inflation, all of this junk. And even though there are more people playing, they needed that thing. But the truth is, it affects how many games people are going to be willing to buy. You know what I right. mean? The closer we get to 100, the less likely people are going to buy stuff because that's a lot. Yeah. Of well, people um, will start switching to, um, you know, digital medium. And, like, I am I like to collect things still. But, I mean, at that point, there's more incentive to buy digital because there's no reason that a digital game should rise above 70 to $80, you know? Yeah, I mean, you'd hope. But the right you'd as hope, of yeah. right as of right now, it is cheaper for you to buy a physical copy of Assassin's Creed Valhalla or Yakuza Like a Dragon. Both of them right. are going for $50 right now than it is for you to buy a digital copy, which are both, uh, I don't know, I don't know what Yakuza Like a Dragon costs. Oh, let me see. I'm going to check right now. But Assassin's Creed Valhalla's main price is $60. You yeah. know what I mean? So... It is, yeah, oh, so same with Yakuza Like Dragon. It's also $60. So what I'm saying is, like, it, it it's strange. You know what I mean? Like, to be like, okay, you could buy those games for $10 cheaper physical, it, where you actually have to pay for the production of the disc. You have to pay for the artwork. You have to pay for all this stuff. But for people like me who like the convenience of having things digital, I think yeah. we're sadly keeping the price of digital stuff inflated. Um, speaking of, though, like, that idea of digital versus physical games pass as you and I talked about last time from loving it has just been like knocking stuff out of the park recently, man. I don't know if you followed this, but as of tomorrow or yesterday, when you're listening, um, I got to get better about just saying yesterday all the time. EA play is now added to Xbox games pass. So, I like, heard about that. I, what, what is that? What exactly does that get me? Cause I know that was a paid service before and you can have access to a lot of the EA games. That's not, their early access program though, right? I think it is. So there it's not oh. the early access that PC has where you could play the game the full game early access, but at least EA Play last time I subscribed for it, which was in 2014 with Dragon Age Inquisition, you could um you could pay 5 bucks and you would get 10 hours of the game 
to play beforehand. You could just play for 10 hours and then you could pay for it and you'd get 10% off the games. Kind of what Games Pass already does with games that are on service. You get a discount if you buy them. So this is being added. On top of that, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order is being added to EA Play. So if you didn't buy that game last December and you subscribe to Games Pass, guess what? You get to play it on Games Pass. You don't need to subscribe extra or to pay anything for stuff like that. And honestly, I see this as being something where a lot of people are going to consider Games Pass who maybe even haven't because like there's so many games that are part of it. I mean, EA Play had a lot of games. So Games Pass getting all of what EA had on top of their hundreds of games is just phenomenal, man. I mean, EA Play was actually an okay service. It was $30 uh, a year, but you could play, like I said, those 10 hours of a new game that you wanted to try before you decided to buy it. Or you could play whatever got into their vault, which with now with Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order being part of their vault, a game from just last year, I mean... That's that's incredible. Did you you liked uh, Jedi Fallen Order, right? Oh yeah, I love Fallen Order. That was one of my favorite games of last year. Yeah. So the fact that now people who pay for Games Pass will get that for free, like man, it's such a deal. On top of that, yeah. I don't know if you saw, but they were hinting at stuff yesterday, and then they announced it today. Disney Plus. If you do not subscribe to that, you get a free thirty day trial if you are signed up for Games Pass. Oh so, nice. Yeah, it's just an extra little perk. It's only thirty days, um, but hey, I. Why not? You know, I mean, if you haven't paid yeah. for it and you want to watch Mandalorian, sure, do it. They did that yeah. for Spotify, too. That was insane. I wish I would have subscribed to that. It was six months of Spotify for free last year. Um, it's just, man, that service is so ridiculously good. And I think it's why we're going to see a lot of people try Series X. Like, I think Xbox was like the black sheep of this generation. I don't think it's going to be that way going forward. Yeah. Um, it's I, just so more I, cost efficient. Yeah, I mean, I because I still have, you know, we talked about I still have my original uh, Xbox, yeah, the Xbox One. Uh, so I went to the because my disc drive's not working anymore. So I went to the, oh, no. this uh, local game store up here, a game uh, games ex- VFX video uh, video game exchange. Okay, and they were saying that like at this point they don't they won't even repair them anymore they just like buy them and scrap them for for parts to fix the other xboxes so they're like yeah. you know if if you want to to upgrade not upgrade but if like you they can't fix it like they just i so i'm hoping that with like this first generation of xbox series x's that microsoft will actually like you know keep keep uh keep making stuff to, to fix those in case something happens to them, unlike the Xbox One, where, uh, you know, I'm kind of stuck. Like, mine actually stopped working v- very well after, like, a year of use. So I'm just hoping that there is support for this throughout its life cycle. So I think, yeah, that's strange, man. That's a bummer. But uh, Microsoft, you know, we talk a lot of good things about them, but they did have some problems. This generation, a lot of people, myself included, and several people I know had problems with their right bumper button. Not yeah. the right trigger, but the right bumper. It goes out on those controllers like quite easily. Um, and yeah, they they moved on to the Xbox One S pretty quickly. And then the Xbox right. One X right after. So it's like if you're stuck with an original base, Xbox One, like I had till I got my Xbox One X, you're going to have like not only games that run poorly with the longest load times, but stuff where it's like you'll be lucky to get 60 bucks for that thing. You know yeah. what I mean? Like nobody wants one anymore. Um, it's probably gonna be, I don't even know what they're gonna do. Probably try to, you know, scrap the parts they can and use them for something better. Um, yeah, yeah, man, I I hope they do a better job, but to be fair, I had problems with my PS4 controller and I barely used my PS4. Like the joysticks went out and, you know, Sony let me fix it, but I had to pay for the shipping and stuff. So it wasn't like a free service where as when there were Microsoft stores, they closed all but four in the United States during the pandemic. When there were Microsoft stores, you could often go in there if the product was recent and just get a new uh, item. So it was it was real good, man. Um, one thing that we haven't really discussed for a while is, so we've, we've talked about these launch lineups, but Sony yeah. has shown quite a few games. They've shown like, hey, this stuff's going to come out. And I didn't, I don't think I mentioned this on the podcast before, but they are saying now that r- these are the rough release dates for their future. So that's one thing that Sony's done very good. They've told you what's coming out. So... Ratchet mm-hmm. and Clank, which the PS4 game is one of my favorite games. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart is coming out supposedly in spring, as well as Gran Turismo 7. So those are their spring games for Sony. 
And then in the second half of 2021, they're expecting Horizon Forbidden West to release. Now, Really? That soon? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, a lot of people thought it was going to be the spring game. A lot of people did not oh. think it was going to take that long. Um, well, I was the, thinking we wouldn't see it till 2022 at the earliest. Well, so a lot of people were thinking we were going to even see God of War next year. I definitely don't think that's going to be the case anymore. I think God of War is definitely going to be 2022. Um, Didn't they I, say 2021 in their that little like teaser trailer they put up? I think they did, but like everything else on Earth, it's not it's not coming 2021. Yeah. I would be amazed. Um, I actually will kind of be amazed if things stay the way they are and people have to work remote. I will be amazed if Horizon Forbidden West comes out next year as well. Because yeah. games like that that are that big, they just have so much time that it takes to make things and to test that when you're at home and you're not able to work with a full team, you, you're just going to have issues. You know what I mean? Issues that are a lot harder um, in this day and age. And uh, one of the last things I want to talk about, because you know I love, love, love slow load times, is some people tested the load times between the Xbox Series X and the PS5 on backwards compatible titles. And Ooh. man, I am super excited. They both performed really well. The Series X is actually faster, which is kind of surprising considering the PS5 is supposed to have a faster uh, solid state drive in it. Yeah. Um, the Xbox Series X showed faster load times on every single game but Red Dead Redemption 2. And even then, it was two seconds slower. And some of their, if you watch this video, it's on GameSpot. It is so cool, man. It's okay. just like, you, we'll you should it a, check it out. It's it really view. neat to see just like how fast these load times are going to be this generation. And honestly, like like we've talked about, frame rates and load times are like what I'm looking forward to. Yeah. I don't have a 4K TV, so I have no, there's no value in that for me. And now with 120 hertz being a thing, like I'm probably not going to get a 4K TV till I can get one that also does 120 frames. You know what I mean? I'm telling you, man, those Black Friday deals at Best Buy right now are pretty sick. So, I mean, if you're in the market for 4K TV, this is the time. But no, but the 120 frames per second TVs are still too, they're still out of my price range. Um, a lot of the ones at Best Buy that are, do 120 are still well over $1,000. Yeah. And for those of you who buy TVs, if you're paying more than 1000 bucks, it means you're buying too early because TVs drop to like 600 bucks or less all the time now. You know yeah, what I mean? Well, you go to Costco or Sam's Club, you always find last year's models around uh, yeah. probably August or September for pretty yeah. cheap. Oh, yeah, man. So, like, right now I'm looking at the LG OLED 55-inch Class CX, whatever, blah -de blah 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 that's 4K and all the other things you need, and it has 120 hertz, but it's $1,400. So, wait, let me just stop you for a second. When you guys go into the store and they ask, like, what features you want on your TV, just say blah -de blah 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 That's That's actually how yeah. I handle it. I mainly, yeah. when I go to Best Buy, I say, shut up and give me what I want. And I don't actually talk to them. As, <laughs> is, it's my right to yell at the uh, employee because I'm really mean. I'm like, hey, I don't have to tell you what I want. You're supposed to know. And that's what I'm about. And even the, here's the crazy thing, right? I just told you about a $1,400 TV that's on sale right now. It doesn't yeah. have 8K UHD. So if I actually want to get a TV uh, well, yeah. that does all the things this next generation promises, <laughs> it's probably like, let me see. It's probably like 2000 plus to get one that what does is the, 8K. Uh, what is the ray tracing situation is what I really want to know. It's insane, man, to be like somebody who's going to get the peak performance out of these out of these consoles, at least right now, you're yeah. looking at so much money. I bet in like three years, it's going to be like the norm. But right now, finding a TV that does 8K and, and HDR and 120 hertz and all this other junk, man, it's just so insane. I'm looking at a TV right now. It's $3,000. It Ooh. still doesn't do 8K. So it's like... Yeah, man, I, I'm like, I'm probably going to wait to get a TV till I can find at least 120 frames and 4K for like 500. But I, yeah. I don't know. I, I think 1080 honestly looks pretty good. Like I'm an, I'm a dummy. I, you got, you heard her here first folks. Okay. I'm a dummy. I don't know <laughs> shit. Uh, we can end uh, the podcast now. I mean, that was all the audience really wanted this, to hear. That's all. Have a good wanted, night, man. everybody. <laughs> have a good night. We're all done. Um, no, but I do want to have a quick you know, uh, jaw session with you. And this jaw session, that's what I call our new topic. I want us to talk about what we remember about console launches. And I want us to start with our earliest memories of console launches and go all the way to our most recent. So I'll start with you because I, I probably have some really early memories, but I'm curious what your first console launch memory is. The first time you were able to be a part of that. 
So I was never actually up until Xbox 360. I was never actually able to like partake in a console launch. I do okay. remember um, being super. I, I mean, I remember being a kid and being super excited. I forget it was in the '90s sometime. I was really excited about the Sega Saturn coming out. 95. And then I remember, yeah, 95, and then that E3 happened, and then PlayStation announced that their console was coming out, uh, I want to say that day, and it was actually uh, one to $200 cheaper. Do you remember that? Uh, it was a yeah, big moment. I say, I, that I was what killed Se Sega. Sega yeah. Like, yeah. Sega Saturn price at launch. I want to say the Sega Saturn was like four or five hundred. Yeah, it was four hundred. And PlayStation, yeah. I want to say, was two hundred dollars. Yeah, um, yeah. So they like completely undercut. And I remember that I really wanted it to get a Sega Saturn, and then I ended oh. up getting a PlayStation because that was what was cheaper, and that was what my parents agreed to get me for like a Christmas present. They could afford it. So, so it was actually three hundred and and uh, three hundred and four hundred. So it was a okay, hundred dollars yeah. cheaper. And yeah, I mean, they get they got you the right choice, man. The Sega Saturn yeah. kind of ended up being a, a bit of a bummer. I own one as right. well. Years later, for fifty dollars. Yeah, um, well, I still have. Yeah, I still have one. I have mine in the living room in there. But yeah, that was like my earliest. I was able to partake, but like that's kind of my earliest memory. And then I like I remember when the Xbox came out, I had no idea that this was even a thing until like I saw my neighbor playing Halo one day and I was like, oh, this is rad. But I wasn't able to like participate in that console launch either because I didn't know it existed. But what is your earliest memory? Yeah, man. So some uh, and we, we can go through the later memories, too. But my earliest like and I'll say launch window, because when we're kids, we don't get them the day they come out most of the time. No. But my earliest launch window memory was the Nintendo 64. It came out in September of I want to say 96. And okay. I had it by like my birthday, December of that year. And I got it with Mario 64 and Wave Race 64. Wave and Race. Whew. Man, that was such a fun year. I want to say by the end of the year, I also had uh, Star Wars, um, okay. Shadows of the Empire. Shadows of the Empire, yeah. Um, yeah, man. Just playing Mario 64 for the first time, especially it being like 3D. Because I, I had a Nintendo as a child, but we got it after the Super Nintendo came out. Because um, yeah. my parents didn't know about games, they won't. And my dad's always been frugal. And then I got the Super Nintendo like in '94, or I think like '94, or '95. So pretty far after it come out, three years or so. And I yeah. got it with Donkey Kong Country. That's how late it was. You know, a what, game that what? came out at the kind of later end of the cycle. Um, so N64 was the first time I kind of felt like, wow, I'm in the know, you know, like you'd get yeah. Nintendo Power and people would be talking about it, and I had it, and I was like, oh man, this is so cool. Um, but the actually the one of the very few consoles I've owned at launch was the Sega Dreamcast. I got it oh. on nine nine ninety nine with Sonic Adventure and Sega Bass Pro Fishing or whatever it was called. Um, you know Game the one where you had everybody like the, loved. Yeah, yeah. Did you ever have that? Real? Yeah, the fishing. No, I uh, I I had friends who owned it. I just I never had a chance. I remember Crazy Taxi was pretty popular on that one though. I don't think Crazy Taxi came out at launch though, did it? I don't. I don't think that launched, but I remember a lot of my friends had it. Yeah, I. I mean, the Dreamcast is such a weird system because I'll always remember it super fondly. But I. I feel like there were a wave of games that came out for it, but like at the beginning, all I remember is like uh, Sonic Adventure, and then I got Power Stone by the end of the year, and probably Crazy oh, Taxi. Like, dang. there wasn't like a ton of stuff out. Did you ever do Gauntlet Legacy on Dreamcast? No, I was too much of a little kid. I, I want to say uh, we were, what, 12 at the time? So we, we were, yeah. Yeah, my parents were still like, hey, here's colorful stuff. You know what I mean? Like, I'd play <laughs> GoldenEye and stuff, obviously, when I was younger. But it wasn't like, hey, here's this really dark-looking thing. Play this. Yeah. It was more like, hey, yeah, you can play these shooting games, but just don't get anything really dark. Um, yeah. But, yeah, did you ever get a Dreamcast? No, I did not get a Dreamcast. Like like I said, I had friends who played it. So I remember playing like Sonic Adventure, Crazy Taxi, Resident Evil Code Veronica was another one I remember yeah. playing. I remember um, seeing that in a Games for Less, if you remember that store. Yeah, I do remember Games for Less. Uh, so my bit, my, like my, the first time I was actually able to partake in a console launch was the 360. Like I was working at oh, Best wow. Buy. Yeah, so I was working at Best Buy. The last thing I had was the Xbox. I remember the 360 came out, and like I was stocking shelves, and I was able to grab one, and uh, I bought it. And then, um, you know, I I don't 
I don't. I think I. I had. Uh, what did I have? Well, I don't remember what I got like at launch with it. But okay. Um. You know, I remember a few months after it came out, I was able to go buy like Oblivion, and yeah. none of my other friends were able to play that game yet. And I remember just like spending hours playing Oblivion. Uh, there was a. Oh. Uh, Oblivion was the reason to own a 360, and it came it, out within like I want to say six months of launch. Si- uh, yeah, yeah, and then because I remember uh, it came out in October, and then that a month later was when uh, November. Gears November was when Gears launched. Gears of War and Assassin's Creed came out, so I remember like it was a pretty that was a pretty solid year for gaming. But I remember being like really excited about that because like I had one, you know, and everybody wanted one. Yeah, sorry, I meant to say, like, uh, the Xbox 360 launched in November, and actually Oblivion came out in March of the next year. But what I'm saying oh, is it okay. came out in, like, a six-month window. Um, but, yeah, yeah, man, the 360 was awesome. I was not part of that launch window. I, I don't know why. Like, I, I was one of the very lucky kids who got a PlayStation 2 within, like, six months of launch, and that was, like, an impossible console to get. Um, I remember playing Dynasty Warriors 2 on it and a game called X-Force, for those of you who are older, you'd probably oh, remember X-Force dang. on uh, yeah. PlayStation 2. It's a very small game that... X-Squad. Sorry, X-Squad, not X-Force. Um, X-O-Squad. Yeah, X-O-Squad. Um, but yeah, man, I was in there for the launch window of the GameCube. That's why I had uh, PlayStation 2, and then I got the launch window of the GameCube, I want to say, a couple years later or a year or two later. I missed the Xbox. I got it way later after Halo and a bunch of other stuff had come out, Morrowind, a few other things. Yeah. Um, 360 i was super late to the party actually i don't know i think i was just too cool at that time we were in high school and i was like i don't need games anymore so like i didn't get a 360 till well like right around the time gears came out was when i actually had one that i could play stuff on that was a solid year for gaming too yeah yeah so it was like a year after its launch otherwise though man i i have got i have received or purchased most consoles around launch like i got the wii that December of 2006 when it yeah, came out. Yeah, I got that for um, Christmas. I got a PlayStation 3 way later, and that's kind of how I've been with PlayStation for the last few generations. Like, got the PlayStation 3 late, got the PlayStation 4 late. I got Xbox One yeah. at launch. I had the day one edition with the day yeah, one that's controller. What, that's what I got, too. Yeah, I remember I got the day one edition of Forza. Uh, Forza was it six? Five is Forza five. five and I got, or six, man. That's yeah, the hard thing. I got um, Rise, the day one edition of Rise. So yeah, I mean, I that was like the one I remember actually like camping outside the store to get me. And Big Dog went down to Target and Seal Beach, and I remember we kind of waited outside the store to grab one. Yeah, it's Forza five. Yeah, man. The Xbox One was. Uh, the funny thing was, I was also kind of too cool for it. <laughs> and we have talked about scalping in the past. I had originally purchased an Xbox One to to sell to make some money because, yeah. like, I was you know like college. I could use the money or whatever. And it's like I, there's nothing that I'm super excited to play. And then I couldn't find anybody who would give me like anything of value for it. So yeah. I ended up just opening it. And I I want to say I picked up like Dead Rising three or had the demo for it or something really quickly. Yeah, no, I've had the demo because I didn't yeah. I didn't own any games man i i want to say the first xbox one game i even owned was oh dude i i can't even remember at this point but it was kind of like later after i don't i didn't get black flag at launch i didn't get battlefield 4 so i i can't honestly tell you what the first game i played was but it wasn't rise and it wasn't dead rising um but yeah, man, so the the most excited I think I've been recently for a console launch, and, and these are pretty cool, like I think these are a lot of fun, but the most excited I've been was honestly the Nintendo Switch in 2017. Okay. The yeah. fact that I was going to get Breath of the Wild in this console that looked so cool and so like groundbreaking, I, I just couldn't wait to play it. Um, that one I did wait at in a line yeah. at launch. First time I've done it in forever. So, so or I, yeah, I mean, and on the scalping note, like I bought a Nintendo Switch because I was going to sell it. And then I yeah. remember like you, uh, me, you and uh, Donna were sitting there. Dr. Donna were sitting there texting and I was. Uh, Don't forget the yeah, doctor, OK? Doctor. Yeah. She's well, going to get so <laughs> angry. <laughs> I remember you guys talking about what a great game Breath of the Wild was. And I was like, ah, and I couldn't resist anymore. I just I sat down, cracked it open and like haven't looked back since. It's honestly the Nintendo Switch is one of my favorite consoles. Period. I, I it is yeah. harder to be excited about this year. We've talked about the fact they just don't have any games. You know, yeah. like Pikmin Three is neat, but it's a very old game. Mm-hmm. Um, but there is going to hopefully be another year like that. That first year of 
the Nintendo Switch, where they released Mario Odyssey, Breath of the Wild, Mario Kart 8, is honestly one of the greatest years for gaming in forever, 2017. Not only did you have those games, you had like just... I, I honestly can't remember what else came out at that point, but I just remember 2017 being like this phenomenal year of oh, games. Oh, of course, let's, yeah. Uh, let's just see real quick, because I have to check it again. So you got Breath of the Wild, you had Horizon Zero Dawn, you had Super Mario Odyssey, the year kicked off with Resident Evil 7, you had Nier Automata, Player Unknown's Battleground started the like the Battleground-style gaming. Um, the Cuphead came out, Destiny 2... The new Wolfenstein game, Assassin's Creed Origins, the final reboot when they restarted that style. Prey, man, it, you just look at this list and you're like, dude, Hellblade, that was a game I remember you really oh, championing yes, and loving. Oh, yes, yes. Um, Neo, Mario's and Rabbids. I mean, it's like such an insane gaming year. Like, I, I still wonder if, like, like you said, how you felt about that year with Oblivion and Gears. Like, this year is one of those years where it's like, dang, man. They, it's an insane year, 2017 and even 2018 was, was great. Um, but it's really been these last two years where we've had such like a kind of down years, to be honest. Like yeah. last year was okay. It was, I had a lot of games I liked, but it wasn't like as incredible. It was fun. Uh-huh. Um, so yeah, man, hopefully you and I can be a part of this, at least the launch window. It sounds like we are not going to be the people who get the launch day consoles this generation as they are coming out. Um, before you listen to this and the day after yeah, this goes up. It's just such a um, weird time we're living in, man. Like it's, you know, if this were not COVID times, I'm sure they'd be yeah. a little bit easier to snag. Well, but Well, not only that, I, I think hopefully we talked about it on the last episode, but you can't buy these in the store day one. A lot of the stores aren't yeah. going to sell them, they said. I think only mm-hmm. GameStop is getting them and they're getting single digit numbers. So you have to like yeah. go and camp out tonight. And I don't know how Texas is, but California is freezing right now. We just had like a cold wind that came through. So it's like 30. It's, I don't know if it's 30. It's very cold at night to the point yeah. where it's like, I don't want to camp out for right. the hope that at 9 a.m. tomorrow or whenever they open 11 a.m. Yeah, I'll be able to pick up a one. console. So, yeah, man, it's it's uh, it's a bizarre time. I am kind of sad to think like I won't be a part of this launch cycle. But that being said, we've talked about it plenty of times here there's nothing that's truly exciting coming out. Like yeah. you and I can play Valhalla if we want. You know what I mean? Yeah. You and I can play Yakuza Like a Dragon. We can play all these things. So yeah. there's nothing like, oh man, the only game I can think of honestly is Demon's Souls. I, I'm kind of interested in Bug Snacks, but not even really. And, uh, and Spider-Man I could play on my PS4 if I wanted. So Yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, I I am really, uh, really curious what's going to happen these few days. But it's always kind of fun reminiscing about console launch cycles because so much of it is tied to, like, childhood. It is. It is. Yeah, it reminds me of being a kid and, yeah. Yeah, and just having that time where it's like, oh, I got the new thing. I'm going to play this thing all day, Mm -hmm. and that's the only thing I'm going to (laughs) do. Right. Um, But, yeah, man, well, I am hoping that we have some fun news next week. Who knows? This is a... Crazy time. Crazy time, USA. Hopefully, the yeah. news is not Cyberpunk gets delayed because that will be a bummer. I'm February, still expecting man. it. I'm still telling you February. Stop it, stop it, stop it. You are jinxing <laughs> us, okay? All of us who are wishing there's chance going on. Sorry, Gavin Newsom. We are chanting. We are chanting that. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if you read. We're not allowed to chant in California now. Um, but we are <laughs> chanting that uh, Cyberpunk be released on in, in December, okay? It must be released in December, and we will keep that chant going even if we're arrested. We will go to prison with that chant. Release Cyberpunk. It's a really bad <laughs> chant, too. Way too many. Uh, way too. No, many no. It's, I mean, just change the beat. Way too many syllables. So we got yeah. way too many syllables for that. Anything you want to add before we hit the road? Uh, no. I mean, hopefully we're able to find some consoles tonight, and we can talk about them. You know, next week. But or we we can talk about how they might be shipping to us at some point. Yeah, how next might? Week. Yeah, <laughs> right. Even if we right. get it, that's the crazy thing. Even if we find them tonight and buy them, there's no telling if we'll get them by the next time yeah. we record. That's what's crazy. Yeah. So good luck to uh, any of the people listening who are trying to get consoles. I hope you get one. Hopefully you already had one pre-ordered and it will come on time. And hopefully you're going to have a blast. Send us an email. Do you remember what our email is, Josh? Superbscast at gmail.com. Yeah, we got to get better at this stuff. Like, uh, I love doing this, <laughs> but we, <laughs> we got to get better at remembering that. we have an email that. address. Yeah, we got an email. You got a way to talk to us. Um, but yeah, till next week. Peace. Late. Oh, yeah.